It is cooking adventure time, and we're gonna make some homemade bibimbap. I started the sigum chinamu blanched spinach side dish. It's gonna have some garlic, some sesame oil, some toasted sesame seeds, and some soy sauce. Oh yeah, das ist gut! Now we're gonna make a mushroom side dish. So we have some oil here, nice and sizzling. Toss in the mushrooms. Stir fry these briefly, add a little bit of sesame oil, a bit of soy sauce, a little garlic, and that's gonna be it. And voila! Similar logic with some broccoli, not very traditional, but I threw it in because I had it in the fridge. Sliced thin, sauteed, same seasonings, sesame, soy, garlic. Same thing with some red bell pepper, just sauteed briefly, same idea, and, and carrot, again, same idea. Just very briefly sauteed, not too long, just to make it soft to the bite. And I blanch the spinach and blanch these sprouts as well. That means cooking them in boiling water and then shocking them in ice water so that it stops the cooking, so they're soft. But I keep the water that I blanch them both in, and I'm gonna turn this into a little soup on the side. So reserve that. Soup is very simple, so I kept in some of the sprouts, some of those leftover spinach, and I'm gonna add in some green onions, sesame oil, soy sauce, you know the drill, some salt, a little bit of black pepper, maybe a little fish sauce. That's gonna be a simple soup. For today's garlic, we're using Isle Española Poviolet, Spanish purple garlic. Do you need that? No. Am I using it? Yes. Why? Because I got it. But look at that color. Ain't it pretty? It's pretty. All right, I felt like the soup was missing something, so I got a little crazy. Threw in some gochujang red chili paste. And uh, only the best beer in the world. That pale blue rib. That pale blue rib. A little bit of that pale blue rib. Beer brings up the, the subtle background notes. How's that soup? That's a good soup. That's a good soup. So now we've got a finished soup and one, two, three, four, five, six side dishes. Are we gonna stop? <laughs> no, let's do two more side dishes. Hello, cucumber. And hello, zucchini. For the zucchini, you see I sliced them on an angle. That makes them a little bit longer and easier to cut into a matchstick type size, which is what you want. Unfortunately, I can't show you how to cut these because I'm holding my dang old phone with one hand. So basically, you're just doing really thin little slices. And you get this. Now, I forgot to add something very vital that I was taught when you're making bibimbap for all of these vegetable preparations. All of these, you know, as soon as you cut them up, before you saute them in a little pan or something like that, you want to just put some salt on them. So just toss them around and then let them sweat. So you're going to see there's going to be a little bit of moisture that's going to come out of these as a result of the salt. It's going to make them a little easier to fry. It's going to help them preserve their integrity, you know, their integrity, so they don't fall apart too much when you briefly saute them after. Then for the cucumber, we're going to cut off the ends, as you see. We're going to slice this baby in half, and then we're just going to slice through it. We're not going to do any of that fancy matchstick thing that we were doing before, because these cucumbers, they will lose their integrity and fall apart very easily. So we just want to cut them in half and then slice them up. So just slice them down the middle, lay them down like this, flat side down, and then we're just going to cut like this. I knocked that over. We're just gonna cut these like this. You can do two at a time. What, bro? What? Yes, you can, and it will be faster. I recommend it. And the result looks like this. It's just like making a green salad. Like, don't even worry about it, man. It's simple. See that? And then we're gonna do the salt trick, just like we did with the zucchini. Put that on there squeeze it together and we're just gonna let it sweat. You can see the result here now. You see that moisture coming out of there? That is what we're aiming for. After that, soy sauce, sesame, garlic, done. I will take a break to finish and eat my delicious soup. And then we'll go back to the bibimbap and finish it up.
soup turned out pretty nice. There's a nice subtle stock that we made out of the sprouts and the spinach and then the other flavors are really accompaniments to accentuate aspects the sesame the salty soy the depth of the beer and the spice from the gochujang and the key is that you don't need a lot of pots and pans i did all of this with one pot and one little pan so after you fry each thing you just wipe it with a little bit of paper towel and that way you're going to keep the flavors out of it and you can just reuse it right away. So we're going to toss in the cucumber, give that a little saute, just very briefly just to wilt it a little bit and make it soft and then that's going to be it. We'll do the same with the zucchini and then we're ready to cook an egg and plate the bibimbap. So here's the paper towel trick. So I just removed the sauteed cucumber and I'm just gonna wipe it down with a paper towel to clear it for the zucchini. Zucchini time! All right, we are almost done. Cracking an egg into some oil. We're gonna make that sunny side up and put it on top of the bibimbap. A tip for the egg is that you can put a cover on it so that it cooks on top but don't leave it there too long or it will fully cook the yolk and you want the yolk to be runny. For the rice I just cooked it simply in a rice cooker. Very easy. I used Calrose because that's what I had but you can use whatever rice you have. And now we are ready for plating or in this case bowling with no pins or balls okay. We're just gonna break up the rice in the bottom. I don't have a special bibimbap bowl. They have certain ones you could heat and they sizzle in Korea, but I'm just using a normal bowl because that's all I have. And I'm actually going to make three at once so that I could use two for lunches. So there's a tip for you working folks. So now we have all of our side dishes and everything is good to go. Traditional bibimbap would actually use uh, the equivalent of a steak tartare. So just some raw beef that's marinated, sometimes in honey, sesame, garlic, soy sauce. Uh, but I'm just using up leftovers from the fridge. To all my Korean friends and friends who lived in Korea, this is sacrilegious, I apologize. But I am actually using up <laughs> some steak and some chicken and some potatoes that I marinated in Korean barbecue sauce instead. So now we are just assembling. So I put that meat, sacrilegious, heretical mixture, and then you just put some of each. Create a nice display of different flavors. All of these side dishes. Just keep on adding. Put in some zucchini and some cucumber. Oh yeah, get some mushrooms too. Oh, I'm messy. And I shouldn't have put cucumbers and zucchinis together because they look exactly the same. Well, that's okay. Yeah, that is okay. Oh, 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 oh. So we transfer the egg on top, and there you have it. Bibimbap. Then you add some red gochujang paste, the red chili paste we saw before for that spicy spice. A little bit of sesame seeds, and you are good to go. Stir it all together and eat that up. There you have it, friends. Homemade bibimbap. And now we eat. You have to mix it all together. Mmm. Mmm. Magnifico combination of the creamy egg, the different sesame spices, the garlic, the spice, and each of the different side dishes, the different flavors, the vegetables, each independently seasoned in their own integrity and preserved, not intermixed too much, only mixing at the last second in perfect harmony with the egg, with the beef. It's just magnifico. So there you have it, friends. Canadian boy makes Korean bibimbap from scratch. 
Please let me know if you like this, if you'd like to see more cooking videos in the future. Thank you guys.